Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again from beyondmthfr.com, and today's video is a follow-up to our previous video on homocysteine, how it hurts the brain, and really how it acts as a toxin inside every cell of our body. And we're going to pick up where we left off last time. We're going to touch on the bell curve, the homocysteine bell curve, which is just a graphical representation of where we want to be. Our goal with our health is to be in the optimum methylation area between four and eight on a blood test. A few people out there watching will have low homocysteine before below four and that is more of a frank uh, protein malnutrition state. That is slow methylation simply because there's not enough methionine not enough protein coming in to allow the system to 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 methylate at a, at a decent speed. For the rest of the video today, we're going to be focusing more on patients with high homocysteine levels. This is a bigger problem in our uh, modern Western society, and really, we're talking about the effects of toxins and overabundance of toxins combining with people who are considered an overconsumption, undernourished phenotype. This is the another way to discuss the metabolic syndrome, the the overweight, um, you know, high blood pressure, elevated risk of cancer, heart disease, stroke, and depression. This is really all due to high homocysteine levels, and we're going to explain in detail how that works. So moving on, we look at this uh, research. Uh, excerpt from 2012. It does a good job of explaining how homocysteine slows down methylation all over the body. And what you're really looking at is how oxidative stress in any form, we're talking about here high fructose corn syrup, which is pretty toxic uh, stuff. It's got mercury in it. We're looking at organic, um, you know, organic pesticides. Uh, we're looking at heavy metals, we're looking at BPA, we're looking at DDT, we're looking at uh, hormones like birth control even, um, and, and certainly uh, fabric, uh, flame retardants, and other chemicals that are just in our environment. Stuff that we've created that uh, is causes inflammation in our body. Any of these substances will cause the cell to react. And, and when the cell comes into contact with inflammation, with things that oxidize it, it triggers a, a response to increase glutathione. Glutathione is the ultimate cellular fire extinguisher. There's nothing our body uses more than glutathione to put out oxidative stress. So glutathione is the number one antioxidant in the cells of our body and it is made from homocysteine. So there we have the connection between an elevated homocysteine level and glutathione, meaning that it's an intelligent response by the body to increase homocysteine in the face of inflammation because homocysteine allows the body to make more glutathione. But the negative effect of that on the cellular methylation cycle is that as homocysteine increases in response to oxidative stress, so that the body can make more glutathione, that shuts down methionine synthase, the NTR. You don't know, you don't have to have a SNP on your report for this to happen. This happens because of epigenetic signaling. It's it's above the gene, not the gene itself. So regardless of whether you have a SNP or not, high homocysteine will slow down the methionine synthase enzyme. If you have a SNP, it's probably going to be a little more uh, a little worse for you, but it can happen to anyone. And the reason why is the body's conserving homocysteine. It's not going to recycle it through NTR when it needs it to make glutathione. That is the key point here. Now when we look at what else uh, homocysteine does in terms of causing problems elsewhere in the body, giving us uh, ultimately disease states, we are going to talk first about nitric oxide. And nitric oxide, like this giant pipe here, it opens up our blood vessels and allows blood to flow. That's why nitric oxide is critical for uh, brain health, 
you know, like erectile function, cardiovascular health, anything where we need to move blood around our body effectively, nitric oxide is playing a role. It allows our blood vessels to stay open. Unfortunately, when homocysteine levels build up, it causes an increase in a molecule called asymmetric dimethyl arginine, ADMA. So ADMA binds very, very tightly to nitric oxide synthase. On your genetic report, it's binding to the NOS, NOS genes. When ADMA is high, it doesn't matter if you have a SNP or not, ADMA will bind to NOS and really make it difficult for your body to make nitric oxide, the good kind. And it will, in turn, cause an increase in the reactive forms of oxygen. This is going to be familiar to some of you as peroxynitrite. That's basically what um, ADMA increases peroxynitrite, it, it uncouples NOS. So that's one of the f ways that homocysteine levels, when they're elevated, uh, impacts our health. Looking now more at the brain, a study was done just this year that basically determined that when someone has a stroke, if they have higher homocysteine, and in this study they say high levels are above 10.3. We're saying high levels are above 8. I believe our numbers are more correct, but again, this research is getting closer to the functional, uh, you know, what a high homocysteine level actually is. So high levels of homocysteine greater than 10.3 we're increasing the risk of someone suffering a stroke having much worse uh, side effects from that stroke. In other words, high homocysteine at the time of a stroke increases the neurological degeneration by 250%. What you need to know of this study is if you're already inflamed and if your brain is already have, has uh, toxic metabolic products in there, if something were to happen like a stroke, the damage will be worse. The flip side is if we nourish ourselves with uh, good antioxidants and we lower homocysteine levels, then should something like a stroke happen, we will add, in fact recover from it better. This is another study uh, recently published in 2013 talking about how homocysteine damages our hippocampus, which is our memory. It's our um, it's where we store our long-term memories of who we are, who the people in our life are, and I'm, I'm really talking here about dementia. So you can see here in this, this picture as an example, this is a fully healthy sized hippocampus. Now the hippocampus is degenerating as, along with a lot of other white matter uh, around it. So homocysteine plays a very big role in the destruction of brain tissue over time. So we want to protect our neurologic systems by optimizing our homocysteine by optimizing methylation, which is just you know the whole reason for this project. So here we have evidence that uh, homocysteine basically changes the electrophysiological properties. And that's a fancy word of saying neurons don't fire right when they're inflamed. And homocysteine is a big player in that inflammation. Looking at some other studies here, as uh, looking at some other effects of high homocysteine, one, one other negative side effect of elevated homocysteine levels in the body is it begins to interact with proteins. And what they're saying in this study is that homocysteine involves cysteine modification, meaning it's when your homocysteine levels are high, that means the cell is filling up with homocysteine, and now it's spilling into the blood, so you can see it on a blood test. It's starting to interfere with connective tissue, and it's weakening it. And this is, this is the Marfan phenotype. This is an example um, of someone who has a weakened arterial wall. And this is really common in Marfan syndrome, and Marfan syndrome is also associated with a very slow CBS, which causes a very high homocysteine. And so by studying Marfans, we can study what homocysteine does, and that's exactly what this shows. High homocysteine interferes with maintenance of the elastic fibers in the skin, lungs, and the aorta. In other words, high homocysteine levels in your body over long periods of time will make your connective tissue weaker. The people with Marfan's disease, or Marfan's syndrome, excuse me, suffer because it weakens the aortic uh, artery here, and 
this is sus, uh, susceptible to bursting. This is why these basketball players are very tall, lanky uh, build, and they're out playing basketball in the finals. And in the third quarter, they collapse on the court because they lost all the blood in their body because of their aorta burst. It's a tragedy, but it's caused by homocysteine. Homocysteine weakens the wall of the aorta. It's under pressure. It slowly turns into an aneurysm, and then it has a susceptibility to burst. I'm not saying this to keep you up at night. I'm just saying here is what high homocysteine levels do to connective tissue. It weakens the elastic fibers. This study caught my attention because it was a very good explanation of how homocysteine levels not only shut off methylation, but it changes the cholesterol levels in our blood. It changes the membrane, the health of the membrane of the cell. So what you need to pay attention to here are the red arrows. Homocysteine increases. It inhibits adenosyl homocysteine, or it, it doesn't inhibit it, but it increases the levels of adenosyl homocysteine. That inhibits all the methylation transferase reactions in your whole body. High homocysteine pushes the reaction back towards adenosyl homocysteine, and that shuts off all the 150 different methylation reactions in your body. What you need to know then is that you stop making choline. The PEMT enzyme is shut off. Then you start to accumulate saturated fatty acids, saturated fats in the membrane of all the cell material. That starts to cause other problems and it creates a biochemical cascade where um, the cell can no longer function at its best. Okay, it's the, the membrane of the cell wall. The takeaway from this study is that when your homocysteine levels rise, you're, going, you're more likely to have saturated fat built into the cell. And saturated fat is more like plastic. It doesn't breathe as well, it's not as fluid, and it doesn't send and receive signals as well. So high homocysteine is one of the causes of having uh, poor cell membrane health. And when the cell membrane is full of saturated fats, the cholesterol that's usually in your cell membrane goes into your bloodstream. And the reason why is when we have lots of good fish oil in our, in our cell wall, the cell wall is very fluid and the cholesterol helps to stabilize it. But if your cell is made out of saturated fats, you don't need the cholesterol in there anymore and so it gets pushed into your bloodstream a la higher cholesterol. So I'm, I'm just sharing this with you. There's more to say about this in future videos, but it is basically, um, it causes endoreplasmic endoplasmic reticulum stress, ER stress. That's what homocysteine does and it's known to cause liver disease as well as atherosclerosis and that has to do with blood sugar. In this next slide, so just building off the slide we just showed you previously, ER stress from high homocysteine plays a critical role in type 2 diabetes. What you need to know is when homocysteine levels rise the cell wall, the membrane of the cell, becomes less fluid and it doesn't listen to the insulin signal as much. Okay? When the cells ignore insulin, we become insulin resistant. That is the foundation of type 2 diabetes. So, this is how it works. High, high homocysteine inhibits insulin sensitivity in fat tissue through endoreplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum stress. The cure, guys, is to get your homocysteine levels in balance and do the healthy things that we discuss here on Beyond MDHFR and in the functional medicine world. That's how we, we overcome this. But this is just good information to show you that homocysteine is, uh, is pretty, pretty devious and mischievous. It's playing a role in, in diabetes as well. Um, inflammation. Uh, shrinks the brain. So brain atrophy, the loss of brain mass, is observed in 20 to 50 percent of patients with epilepsy. And again, my heart goes out to people who have dealt with this. I have patients who have gone through this uh, process. It's not, uh, it's a very, very stressful disorder. But what the research says is there is a link between seizures, oxidative stress, and homocysteine. Patients with epilepsy need to get their methylation cycle balanced as much as anyone and it will maintain the mass of their brain and just give them a better shot at being healthy. 
One more uh, research snippet here before we close for today. This is just another example demonstrating that from the Parkinson's disease research that the inflammation caused by homocysteine over time creates a situation where the size of the brain literally shrinks as I just showed you and this is a graphical representation between a healthy age-matched brain and one with Alzheimer's and as I mentioned in part one Alzheimer's is now the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and it's not a pleasant easy quick way to pass on and it can be a, it can be prevented and improved by using this uh, science of uh, methylation and functional medicine so that's why we're talking about it homocysteine levels significantly correlate with loss of uh, memory cognitive ability and neurodegeneration and, and that's something that we all need to pay attention to so I hope you found this video int uh, useful and interesting uh, please reach out with any questions or comments you can post on the blog at mthf beyond mthfr.com and as always uh, thanks for your time and attention and we will see you again soon